Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about the part two of the Dado unit diagram. Okay. So in our first lecture we discussed about the body fluid disturbances due to the fluid loss. In this lecture we are going to discuss about the body fluid disturbances due to the fluid gain. So let's start it. Before going into the main topic, let's discuss the basic first. So there are six schematic Dario unit diagram and we divided it into two parts. The first part is the body fluid disturbances due to the fluid loss. The second part is the body fluid disturbances due to the fluid gain. And a loss and gain of the fluid occurs only from the extracellular compartment okay so we discussed this concept also in the previous lecture that is the intracellular fluid volume is determined by the extracellular osmolarity means a change in the extracellular osmolarity will affect the intracellular fluid volume okay so if the osmolarity of the ecf decreases okay if the osmolarity of the ecf extracellular fluid decreases then what will affect what will happen to the intracellular compartment this goes hypo so this goes hyper and water moves from hypo to hyper in reverse if the osmolarity of the ecf increases then what will happen then this becomes hyper okay and this become hypo okay so fluid started to move from this side to this side this concept we studied in the previous lecture okay and let's again discuss this uh, following are the steps to follow while interpreting the derivative diagram okay so first we have to check the extracellular fluid volume okay this is the first step we check the extracellular fluid volume to know whether there is a loss or gain of fluid second part is the most important part to check the extracellular osmolarity okay and this extracellular osmolarity will decide the movement of fluid okay and the third part is the check the intracellular fluid volume if you did not check this part it's okay okay it's okay but you can check the intracellular fluid volume to recheck the osmolarity of the extracellular compartment the fourth step is to check whether there is a isotonic hypotonic or hypertonic loss or gain of fluid okay and the fifth part fifth step is the is to check the pathological cause associated with different fluid disturbances let's come to the main topic so before starting i just want to remind you that you can use my blog okay so i provided a detailed notes on this topic for you guys okay so in this blog you can see i provided the the uh, slide pictures and also provided a detailed explanation to each slides okay so you can after watching this video you can go to this uh this blog my blog i will provide the link to my disc uh, description so you can easily go in this blog and check all the notes i provided for you guys body fluid disturbances due to the fluid gain so let's discuss this okay so our first taro unit diagram under the fluid gain is this one so whenever you see any taro unit diagram just remember all those five step i gave you so the first step is to check the extracellular fluid volume okay so here you can see that there is an increase in the extracellular fluid volume in this diagram okay the second step is to check the extracellular osmolarity so here you can see that there is no change in the extracellular osmolarity so i told you that the extracellular osmolarity will decide the intracellular fluid volume so if there is no change in the extracellular osmolarity then there will be a no movement into no movement of fluid into the intracellular fluid okay there will be a no movement of fluid okay because there is no change in the extracellular osmolarity okay that's why 
the intracellular fluid volume is also constant okay and a fourth step is to check that whether there is isotonic hypotonic or hypertonic loss or gain of fluid okay so we already discussed that there is a gain of fluid already okay so so we have to just exclude that whether there is a isotonic hypotonic or hypertonic okay so if the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid remain unchanged it means that there is a addition of the isotonic fluid isotonic fluid that is equal in solute and solvent okay so this diluent diagram is an example of isotonic fluid gain pathologically isotonic fluid gain is seen due during the infusion of the isotonic fluid that is the saline we know that in saline there is a 0.9% nacl is there which is a isotonic okay and this <clears throat> this diluent diagram is also seen in corn syndrome so what is corn syndrome so corn syndrome in corn syndrome there is a increase in aldo okay so what is the function of aldo the function of aldo is to retain the sodium okay so if if the body retains sodium then who will join the party the water will join the party along with sodium because we know that the sodium attract water so if this both will join the party then there will be a isotonic fluid gain okay because this is solvent this is solute if both are mixed in a same amount then there will be a isotonic fluid gain okay so let's discuss the another diluent diagram so in this diluent diagram just follow the five steps so the first step is to check the extracellular fluid volume it's increased second step is to check the extracellular osmolarity it's decreased and the, so if the extracellular osmolarity decreases it means that this medium is hypotonic so this medium will become hypertonic so fluid will move from this direction to this direction okay third step is to check the intracellular fluid volume it's increased the increase in the intracellular fluid volume indicates that the osmotic gradient is toward this direction and that reconfirms that the extracellular compartment is a hypotonic medium okay so fourth step is to check whether there is a isotonic hypotonic or hypertonic loss or gain of fluid so there is already a gain of fluid okay so this medium is hypotonic so how we can make the extracellular compartment hypotonic we can only make the extracellular compartment hypotonic when we add hypotonic in this medium hypotonic means we add a, a, a solution which is more in solvent more in solvent than than solute okay so we add if we add a solution which is more in solvent than solute then that makes the extracellular compartment hypotonic so this diluent diagram is an example of hypotonic hypotonic fluid gain okay so here i just write what i said so there is increase in the ecf fluid increase decrease in the ecf osmolarity decrease in the ecf osmolarity increase in the icf fluid increase in the icf fluid okay that in that that indicates that the osmotic gradient is toward this direction <clears throat> okay and so this this is the hypo means there is a addition of hypotonic solution in the extracellular compartment okay so this is the example of the hypotonic fluid gain pathologically hypotonic fluid gain is seen during the primary pyridepsia so what is primary pyridepsia so primary pyridepsia is characterized by excessive drinking of water in the absence of physiological stimuli to drink that is the pathological drinking 
so during stress some people drinks a lot of water so when they drink lot of water they create a body fluid disturbance they create a hypotonic fluid gain body fluid disturbance okay so during the infusion of hypotonic saline we also see this kind of fluid body fluid disturbances okay so you just understand that when you infuse or when you add hypotonic saline in the body then it creates a hypotonic gain of fluid okay and we know that the gain and loss of fluid take place only in the extracellular compartment okay so that makes the extracellular compartment hypotonic due to the infusion of hypotonic saline and this type of derivative diagram or this type of body fluid disturbances is also seen during the syndrome of inappropriate adh so what happens in the syndrome of inappropriate adh so in this condition there is a, there is a increase in the adh okay so what is the function of adh so the function of adh is to retain water so if our body retain water and water only and did not excrete did not excrete urine then what will happen the water started to accumulate in the body so water when water started to accumulate accumulate in the body then that creates a hypotonic fluid gain let's discuss the another derivative diagram so in this derivative diagram just follow the five steps so the first step is to check the extra cellular fluid volume it's increased second step is to check the extra cellular osmolarity it it's increased okay so if the extra cellular osmolarity gets increased then this medium will be hypertonic so this medium will become hypotonic so we know that the movement of fluid takes place from hypo to hypo so fluid moves from this from this to this third step is to check the intracellular fluid volume so here you can see that there is a decrease in the intracellular fluid volume so this decrease in the intracellular fluid volume indicates that the osmotic gradient is toward this direction so this reassures that the extracellular compartment is hypertonic okay because we know that the osmotic gradient okay is towards the direction of osmosis and osmosis takes place from hypo to hypo so this extracellular compartment is hypertonic okay for the step is to check whether there is a isotonic hypotonic or hypertonic gain or loss of fluid okay so there is already a gain of fluid so in order to create a hypertonic extracellular compartment we need to add extracellular we need to add hypertonic uh, solution okay when we add hypertonic solution hypertonic solution means a solution which is more in solute than solvent then we can create a hypertonic hypertonic medium in the extracellular compartment so this is the example of the hypertonic fluid gain so here i just wrote what i said so increase in the ecf fluid increase in the ecf fluid increase in the ecf osmolarity increase in the ecf osmolarity and and decrease in the icf decrease in the icf so decrease in the icf will indicates that the osmotic gradient is toward this direction so this medium is what this medium is hypertonic so in order to create the hypertonic we need to add hypertonic medium okay so there is addition of hypertonic fluid into the extracellular compartment and that makes the ecf hypertonic so this is the example of hypertonic fluid gain pathologically hypertonic fluid gain is seen during the excessive salt intake so salt is what nacl nacl is solute so if we take more salt that is solute in our diet then it creates a hypertonic extracellular compartment that is the hypertonic gain of fluid okay and we can also create hypertonic fluid gain when we take a hypertonic saline when we infuse 
hypotonic saline then we get the hypertonic fluid gain okay and also by hypertonic mannitol and this condition is also seen due to the initial effect of the hyperglycemia in diabetes mellitus so what happens in the diabetes mellitus that due to the due to the uh, disruption of the receptor in the cell membrane the glucose can't able to enter inside the cell so if the glucose can't able to in enter inside the cell that glucose started to accumulate into the extracellular compartment so when the glucose started to accumulate into the extracellular compartment then then that creates the extracellular compartment hypertonic that is the hypertonic fluid gain thank you very much